So there's some interesting history about how to take the derivative of the product of two functions. And it used to be uh, way back in the day that people thought that the derivative of f times g should just be f prime times g prime. Leibniz thought this. And he worked really hard to try and show it. And he never quite could. It, it didn't work because it isn't true. Uh, and so sort of this is the first time in this class where what we might guess would be true as far as the formula goes actually isn't. So let me show you the true product rule. Uh, so here it is. It's one of those like scratch cards. Oh, that's fun. So the derivative of the product of two functions, I'm going to think about the first and the second. So it's f prime g, derivative of the first times the second, plus f g prime. f prime g plus f g prime. You should say that a couple of times and get it in your head. So we'd like to actually see why this formula works. And so we're going to go ahead and use the same kind of notation as last time. We're going to let big F be the thing we're interested in FG. And we're going to write down the defining limit for big F. It feels like we just did this, but this is good practice for us to make sure that we understand what these derivatives really are. So big F prime we know is the limit as H goes to 0 of big F of x plus h minus big F of x all over h. And now let's fill in the details. This is the limit as h goes to 0. Big F is little f little g. So this is little f of x plus h, little g of x plus h minus little f of x, little g of x all over h. And so at this point, we're sort of stuck. And the way that we get unstuck is that we simply add a clever version of 0 into the middle of our limit. Whoa. So the clever version of 0 that I want to add is right here. I want you to take a look at this expression and convince yourself this is just 0. I'm, ad I'm adding and subtracting the same thing. And so it's just 0. And so here we go. Let's see if we can add 0 in the right, ray, in the right way. So I get that this is the limit as h goes to 0 of little f of x plus h, little g of x plus h. Now I'm going to uh, put this thing right in the middle. And so I'm going to get minus f of x plus h, g of x, plus f of x plus h, g of x. Then I'm going to get this minus f of x, g of x. And we're all over h. Now. Nothing has changed because this is just 0. I can do that. What this allows me to do, it's kind of sneaky really, is it allows me to group the first terms and then the second terms. And look at these first terms. They share a x plus, a f of x plus h. I can factor that out. And these terms both share a g of x. I can factor that out. So I'm going to break this limit up a little bit. I need to squeeze this in here. So I'm going to write this as the limit as h goes to 0. And from these terms, I'm going to group these together and factor out this f of x plus h. And so I get f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. And then I get plus over here. We're going to pop a g of x out. And we're going to be left with this part. So g of x times f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so at this point, when you take limits, you should realize, look, as h goes to 0, this just goes to f of x. This just goes to g prime. This is g of x. And this goes to f prime. And so at that point, we're done. Taking limits, I get f of x times g prime of x plus g of x times f prime of x. And some of you are saying, that's not the formula. Well, if you scroll up, I simply wrote it backwards. That's all. And it's the same thing. So if we want to, we can say, look, 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 look. This is the same thing as f prime of x, g of x, plus uh, f of x, g prime, which is how I think about it in my mind. That's a prime there. It looks like a little bit long prime. There we go. All right, so we're asked to use our formula to take the derivative of sine x times x to the 10th. And so we know the derivative of sine is cosine. Using the power rule, we know the derivative of x to the 10th is 10x to the 
ninth. And so see if you can take the derivative yourself and then check it with the video after you've done that. So here we go, f prime of x is, I take the derivative of the first part, the derivative of sine I know is cosine of x times x to the 10th, I'll put a little time symbol there. Then I'm gonna have plus just the first function sine of x times the derivative of the second which is 10x to the 9th. And uh, at this point I can sort of factor out an x to the 9th, I get x to the 9th times x cosine x plus 10 sine of x. And I know some of you are asking right now, do we have to do that? Do we have to do that? Um, no, at the very least, you should probably put this stuff out in front of sine. I like to put the powers of x on the left of my other functions. To me, it just makes it easier to read and keep track of. So at least do that, but I want to point out that you can factor it out. All right, so we're going to do one more very short video, and then we will be done with this worksheet.